Hello and welcome to our Thursday devotional from Christ United Methodist Church. I'm Barbara Tegmeyer, the certified lay minister here. And I'd like to share this week a story back from Exodus in the Old Testament. I thought about us wandering around in our world these days with COVID and were there any lessons that the Israelites from way back could teach us about also wandering through the wilderness. I focused this week on the story of the crossing of the Red Sea. And it was just interesting to think about this and take a look at how these travelers handled things and, and how God got involved in their lives. And so, as you may recall, the Israelites were leaving Egypt and they followed Moses to uh, what they thought was going to be maybe a short journey. And as they headed out from Egypt, they were headed toward the Red Sea. They were walking and things were maybe going along okay at the very beginning. It was maybe easy to have a bit of energy as they had put their sandals on and they were excited about leaving. So maybe those first few days, there was a lot of action going on and activity and excitement. But as the days wore on, the Israelites got tired. It reminded me of when I was at Katrina about 15 years ago now, uh, when we first got there to help people in very hard, difficult circumstances. The team, the people that were together were, were together and bonded because they were excited, excited. they knew that they were doing something, they were on the road together. But as time passed, the people that were helping at Katrina started to whine. They started to complain that they were tired and they did not have enough food. So I was just wondering if that's how the Israelites were at this key moment. They ended up being kind of trapped. They were trapped as they were moving along to uh, between two mountains and the Red Sea. And they just felt that they were walking into a trap and they probably knew it. So they were very adamant and, uh, and, and, and vocal about the fact, wait a minute, Moses, wait a minute, why are you leading us down into a place where there may be no return? And uh, the Lord said to Moses at that time, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. And then God said, raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water that they were in front of so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I hadn't read this quite in detail or understood it as I did this week, that to focus on God told Moses to raise out his hand. It wasn't just God saying, rest, relax, I've got this. I know I brought you guys down here but now I can take care of things. No, the very first thing he did was he asked and told Moses to do something, to raise out your staff and to raise out your hand. So as they traveled, the waters parted and the angel of God who had been traveling in front of, the, of Israel's army withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel as they were passing through the Red Sea. This too, I looked at in a different way. Was this angel that was in the pillar of a cloud going behind them just to form a wall between the Israelites and the Egyptian army? Or possibly, think about it, maybe the angel was pushing the people along, pushing the people through what might have been a terrifying wall of water. I read that some people are really questioning whether the water was parted in such a big and dramatic way. And I read about a gentleman, Carl Drews, who calculated that even in 10 inches of deep water, if the water wasn't very deep where they were crossing, in 10 inches of deep water, 63 mile per hour winds coming from exactly a certain direction could part the water. So there's a lot of things that people refute about the, this crossing. However, even Mr. Drews, a man of faith, ended his mathematical analysis with the faith statement. 
I choose to believe there were walls of water and a miracle, maybe in, even in Cecil B. DeMille proportions. So do not let these questions distract us from the facts. So the people passed through the water, and then once again, Moses, when they were safely on the other side, Moses had to turn around again. The Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over, over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak, the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing forward toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. But the Israelites were safe, and they went through on safe ground. And when the Israelites saw the great power the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. So this week, what I'm thinking of is maybe we're all called to stretch out our hands, to stretch out our hands and do something. Even with angelic tornadoes, with walls of water on either side, with a dry seabed under our feet, effort is required. God rarely sits back and says, I've got this. What am I willing to stretch out so that God can work with me and through me? When I stretch out my hand, am I stretching out my resources? Am I stretching out security? Am I maybe stretching out to look at the world in a different way? What are we willing to stretch out so that God can bless our efforts in transformation that might just be your own transformation instead of just all those folks out there? Moses didn't know what was going to happen when he stretched out, but he did it anyway. And God made a way where there was no way. The result was no more doubt than he had ever imagined. It was more doubt than he had ever imagined, which often happens when we take risks. When they were safely across, the people sang out a song of praise also in chapter 16. So I think that's something to remember as well. As we see these miracles, as we stretch out our hand and we learn new things and we're transformed, Let's always remember to thank God, to thank God in so many ways, with song, with conversation, with shouts of joy, and with prayerful thanks. Amen.